A few years ago, I bought a motorized standing desk to help me be on my feet more and on my butt less. At first, I would stand up for extended periods of time on my own, but as the novelty of a standing desk wore off, I stood less and less. Obviously, I wanted to stand more often, so I wanted to come up with some kind of reminder system that wasn't just a repeating alarm clock. To deal with my issue, I wanted to try to utilize my smart home, being run on a Home Assistant yellow hub, to do the heavy lifting for me. I first started with a contact sensor on my desk leg, which worked okay, but it stuck out, and was still basically just a repeating alarm clock with a little extra smarts. After some searching, I found the Upsy Desk Key. This little device is a custom PCB with an ESP32. It has a USB-C port for initial setup, and two RJ45 ports to allow it to sit in line between my motorized standing desk controller and its keyboard. With the onboard ESP32, you're able to add the device into Home Assistant, which is exactly why I picked one up. At $45 USD, it was a no-brainer for me. You will also need a high-quality Ethernet cable to connect between the control box and the Upsy desk key, which I will have a link for in the description below, along with all the documentation for the Upsy desk key. While the Upsy desk key has worked well for me, there are some other DIY options possible as well that can accomplish what I'll be covering in this video. Also keep in mind that while it does work with a good number of powered standing desks, not all are going to be supported, so it would be a good idea to verify compatibility before ordering one if you plan on doing so. Getting the Upsy desk key onboarded onto my network and added into Home Assistant was really straightforward. First plug the device into power with its USB-C port and give it a few moments to boot. After it's booted, you'll need to connect to its hotspot which should have Upsy Desky in its name. And then enter in a shared secret, which at the time of this recording is Hunter 2 Hunter 2. The captive portal page should automatically appear, but if it doesn't, you can go to http 192.168.4.1 in your browser. From here, you'll see a list of visible SSIDs. Click on yours, and then enter in your shared secret for the wireless network. Once all done, click on save and the device will reboot and attempt to connect to your wireless network. This can take a few minutes. As long as your network and Home Assistant are set up to allow it, Home Assistant should automatically discover the Opsy desk key after it finishes rebooting. You can add it in by navigating to integrations and clicking on configure under the device if it's discovered. Click on submit to add it into Home Assistant, and then assign it to an area if you want. I'll be assigning mine to my office area. Once added, you'll be able to find the device under the ESP Home integration under configured. Looking at the Upsy desk key and Home Assistant, we can see that we can actually trigger one of the four preset buttons on the front of my desk, along with manually setting the target desk height. You'll also be able to see the height of the desk under Sensors, and you can configure a few parameters including setting the four presets. If you have the ESP Home add-on installed, now would be a good time to adopt the device in. If you don't, I recommend considering the add-on as it helps manage and update ESP Home devices added into your Home Assistant installation. Once your Upsy desk key has been integrated with Home Assistant, you can unplug the USB-C cable. The desk itself will provide power to the device. Next, connect your Upsy desk key to your desk's control box using an RJ45 cable. It doesn't matter which jack you use. Then after a few minutes, check if Home Assistant is able to control it properly. At this point, you can also connect the desk keypad to the other RJ45 jack on the Upsy desk key so that you can use it as well if you want, but it is not required if you no longer want to use the keypad. Now that we have our standing desk and home assistant, we can do a bunch of different things. For example, we'll be shortly going over my automation to track an alert on if I'm standing or sitting at my desk for too long. You can also set the height of your desk automatically as part of an automation, like at the start of your day or when you're done working. For my sit-stand tracking automation, I'm also utilizing an MM Wave Presence sensor from Apollo Automation to keep track if someone is in the office or not. To simplify things, my office being occupied is tracked with a different automation that sets a toggle helper on if someone is in the office and sets it to off if there is no one in the office. This occupancy tracker toggle is what I use for my desk automation. Within my desk automation, I have six different triggers, each having their own unique trigger ID which I take advantage of. The first two triggers are for when my office occupancy sensor detects someone entering the office and when it detects the room is empty. The next two triggers are for if the desk changes to a standing height or if it changes to a sitting height. And the last two triggers are for if the desk timer ends or if the reminder timer ends. This occurs when either the desk monitor timer or reminder timer changes their state to idle, which occurs when the timer reaches zero. This automation also takes advantage of two conditions under AND IF. The first is if I am actually home. If I'm not home, then the state of my desk doesn't need to be tracked. The second condition is if the time is between 8am and 11pm. 
This one I didn't originally have, but I quickly discovered that I don't really feel like standing late at night, and having a constant reminder to stand was kind of really annoying. Finally, this automation has five different actions. The first action is triggered if the trigger ID for the trigger causing the automation execution is the office being entered. If it is, two additional if blocks are checked. The first if block check will be for if the desk height is a standing height. If it is, a timer will be set for 15 minutes. The second if block check will check for if the desk is at a sitting height. If it is, the timer will be set for 30 minutes. A quick tech tip, you could just use the else statement under either of these nested if blocks to set the timer to the opposite time. This will save time in rule creation and in theory shorten automation rule execution time. For me, I like to be able to see exactly what's going on easily, so I almost never use the else option, but instead create additional if then blocks. The second action is triggered if the office exited trigger is what caused the automation execution to occur. If it did, then both the desk timer and reminder timer are paused. Third action is triggered by the desk standing trigger ID. If it is, the desk monitor timer is started with a 15 minute countdown. The reminder timer is also paused with this action. The fourth action is triggered by the desk sitting trigger ID. If it is, the desk monitor timer is started with a 30 minute countdown. The reminder timer is also paused with this action. The fifth and final action is triggered by either the desk timer or reminder timer going to zero. When this happens, two different if blocks will be evaluated. The first if block will check to see if the desk height is at a standing height. If it is, then the reminder timer will be set for 5 minutes, and an audible notification will be sent to my office Google Home suggesting it's time to sit down. The second if block will check to see if the desk height is at a sitting height. If it is, then the reminder timer will be set for 5 minutes, and an audible notification will be sent to my office Google Home suggesting it's time to stand up. Let's now take a look at this automation in action. When I enter my office after 8am, the height of my desk is checked to determine if I'm sitting or standing. If I'm sitting, a 30 minute timer is started. And if I'm standing, a 15 minute timer will be started. If I leave the office before the timer is up, then it is paused, and the same logic will be followed when I return, with the timer starting all over again. If before the timer finishes, I happen to change from sitting to standing, then the timer is reset for 15 minutes. Likewise, if I change from standing to sitting, the timer will be reset for 30 minutes. If I stay in a seated or standing position for long enough, the desk timer will reach zero, and my Google Home will give an audible notification instructing me to change my position. Incoming broadcast. It says, you've been standing for a while, consider sitting for a bit. If I ignore this audible notification, I will be reminded every five minutes until I either change positions, I leave the office, or it's past 11 p.m. Incoming broadcast. It says, you've been sitting for a while, consider standing for a bit. I'd love to know what other ways you think I can improve on this automation, so make sure to let me and the community know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy automating!